Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. I hope you're having a great weekend. Today I want to show you how to make this cute little Lawn Fawn Holiday Helpers card. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start by using this set here. We're going to grab that either church or meeting house, whatever you want it to be. And we're going to grab the lamp post from this Winter Village set. And we also have the matching dies. And then we're going to grab these two little L's and the nice list. And also later we'll be using You Are On My Nice List from the Holiday Helper set. And then we're going to take this set here with the Christmas tree. And this is from Christmas Dreams. And a little later we'll grab those packages as well. And also we want to take some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock in the 100 pound weight. We're going to be doing our stamping on that paper. And as I mentioned, we're going to grab those the set of packages as well. I'm going to place the lamp post on a separate acrylic uh, stamp just because we're going to be doing about four of those. And then I'm going to grab my Onyx Black VersaFine ink and I'm stamping this on my Misty. And I'm just going to stamp those images and then go ahead and grab that lamp post and stamp four more of those. So now that we have everything stamped, we're going to go ahead and grab some purple tape and attach all of the dies to these. I'm going to run that through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine. And you can see there we have everything die cut. So now I have a standard A2 size card. And I'm going to take the stitched mountain borders. And I'm taking the smaller one and the matching snow caps. And I'm going to die cut these out of some Ranger gray cardstock, which I will give you the information below. And I'm going to go ahead and position that up towards the top of that piece of gray paper. The paper was cut four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I'm going to die cut the matching uh, snow caps in white. And I did two sets of those. So now I'm going to take the Lawn Fawn uh, glue stick, glue tube. And I'm going to attach all of those little snow caps to the top there. I'm attaching these ones on the end. And then once they're dry, we're going to just flip that over and cut away that excess. So now you can see where that's going to sit on the card up towards the top. But I wanted to create a sky. So we're going to grab some tumbled glass oxide ink. And we're going to just uh, apply that evenly all across the top there. And then I'm going to grab the peacock feathers and coming in about where I think that shadow would be, just behind those mountains, I'm just going to apply uh, just a row of that all the way across. Then I'm going back to the tumbled glass and I'm just going to pull that color up towards the top. And just kind of blend those two together and you can see there you get a nice shading. So now I want to take the black soot distress oxide and I'm just going to apply a very light shading of that all along those mountain tops and even a little bit on the snow caps there. Now I want to create a border of trees right underneath that mountain range. So I'm going to take the sparkle cardstock in the pixie dust from Lawn Fawn and this border of trees which is the forest border. And I'm going to die cut those trees right out of that sparkle paper. And you don't need a lot of it. I don't like to use up a lot of this paper. So I just cut a little small section of it here. And I'm going to go ahead and die cut the border, the stitched hillside border that matches that. And I'm going to die cut that out of some white uh, Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. I cut my papers to five and a quarter, I'm sorry, five and a half by four and a quarter just so I don't have to worry about what size they're going to be. I just die cut up towards the top of the white cardstock. And then I'm going to go ahead and on the back side, I'm going to apply some glue up towards the top just so I can attach that forest border there. And I'm lining that up so my trees will be nice and sparkly. And then I'm just snipping off the excess and that little tree there I thought was going to hang over the card so I just snipped that one away. And now you can see that's going to sit right under there. Now as I said before I had cut the paper bigger than I needed 
So I'm just figuring out where it's going to be. Then I'm flipping that over and I'm just going to draw a pencil line there as to where I need to cut that white cardstock. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. I'm using the Tim Holtz Tonic Trimmer. I'm just going to cut away that excess. So now it's going to sit nicely on the card there. So now I'm going to grab that black soot ink again and now I want to create a little bit of a shadow behind that forest border. So I'm just going to apply that black ink all across and then I'm just going to come in here and blend it out a little bit. Again, just trying to create a little bit of a shadow behind that, behind those trees. And once you like, you, you, you like how that looks, I'm just blending a little bit more here. Once you like how that looks, you can go ahead and attach those two together. So I'm going back to my glue tube and I'm just going to apply some glue all over the back of that panel. And I decided to add a little bit of glue on the backs of each of those little trees just to make sure that they don't, they're kind of delicate and I didn't want them to pop up. So I'm going to go ahead and attach those two together. And now I can go ahead and attach that panel to the card. And you can see how pretty that's starting to look. So now I'm taking another piece of that gray cardstock and I'm grabbing the dies, the road border dies, and I want the one without the center line down it. And I'm going to grab the uh, tape again and die cut two of these. Now I'm going to take my black soot ink and apply a little bit of ink all down the edges of these, down both sides of both pieces of these, just to give it a little bit of a shadow. Now you could die cut these in black if you prefer, but I thought the gray was a little less, less harsh, I guess. So uh, I did decide to use the gray. So now you can see that fits right on there and it follows the line of the snowbank. And now I wanna make this look like the town green with the meeting house or the church there. And I wanna make it look like the road, you know, how a green would look. And so I'm gonna place a little bit of glue on that second one there and attach those two together. And now I'm going to just snip off a little bit of that end there. I don't need to glue that whole panel. And now I'm going to apply glue along the back of this. I'm not going to apply it all the way to the edges because I want to tuck that little meeting house or church back in there later on. So I'm going to just Go ahead and put glue down the center of these two roads. And then I'm going to snip away the excess there. Don't worry about that little piece there because that's going to get covered. So now I'm going to take my green Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pen and a water brush, the Tim Holtz water brush. And I'm going to start to color in my Christmas tree. And I'm just applying ink kind of where it would be the darkest. And then I'm going to take the water brush and just start to blend that out. Now, you can see that my brush was very wet here. So I keep a paper towel handy and I'm dabbing it off. You don't want it to get too, too wet. So I'm just drying it off and cleaning it off every once in a while just to make sure that it doesn't get too saturated. So I'm going to continue down the tree, just blending, doing the same thing where I think it would be the darkest. And then blending those out. And the nice thing with the Zig Clean Color pens is the tip is so nice and uh, fine that it's very easy to get into these little teeny tiny spaces. Not difficult at all. So. 
I, I go to these pens a lot to color in my little uh, lawn fawn images. So now you can see that that's the first blending. Then I, what I'm going to do is go back over everything one more time. The same exact thing I just did, just adding a little bit more color. I didn't want to change green colors. I just wanted to darken it up with the same color. So I'm just going through and coloring all that in and you can see you get a nice shadow there. Now I'm going to grab the wine red and I'm going to color all of these little ornaments in the red. Now I have the beige and dark oatmeal and I'm going to color the trunk of the tree starting with the lighter color. Then I'm adding the darker color up towards the top there and I'm just going to pull that color down. And I'm using the lighter pen to pull the color down this time. You can use the water brush if you prefer. And now I'm going to take my Spectrum Noir Spun Gold Sparkle Pen. This is a really pretty gold color. It's kind of a yellowy gold. And I'm going to color the tree topper with that so it'll have a nice sparkle. Then I'm going to grab the uh, sparkle pen in the crystal clear and I'm just going to go over each of those ornaments with that clear color. Now I think you can see there the sparkle on the tree topper and then on all the little ornaments. I am going to heat set this. I do tend to heat set as I go along because here I want to use my jelly roll pen in the white to add a little bit of highlight on each of those bulbs. Now, if you didn't dry this, that would be very difficult to do. The pen would kind of blend right in with the ink if it's too wet. So you do need to dry it in order to do that process. So now I'm going to take my two little elves in the, and I'm going to grab the wine red color in the Zig Clean Color Pen. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing I did with the tree. I'm just putting my darkest color where I think it would be the darkest. And then I'm going to take that water brush again and I'm going to start to pull that color out. I'm not doing a real lot of blending here, just some basic blending. Um, you could spend a lot more time with these if you want to. I just thought they look cute no matter which way you color them. So if you want to just simply color them in, feel free to do that. I think it looks just as cute. Now here I'm just going to add a little bit more shading under the arms there and continue to blend these out. And I just think these little elves are just adorable. I couldn't wait to use them. I've had them for a little while and I really had to get to them. I just think they're so sweet. So now I've got his little outfit blended out. And I'm going to do the same exact thing for the little boy one. So I'm only going to show you uh, coloring one of them. I'm going to grab the green color here and I'm going to just do a little bit on each side of her cap there. And then I'm going to grab that water brush again. And you do want to make sure you clean that water brush each time you change colors. You don't want to uh, contaminate another area with the color you used previously. So, And I've done it many times where I haven't cleaned it. So from my experience, <laughs> make sure you clean it off. Now I'm just doing his little tights or her little tights there. And then I'm going to grab that May green, which is kind of a lime green, and do the little booties. I'm going back to that spun gold to do the belt. And that'll add a little sparkle there as well. And then for the hair, I'm going to use yellow and beige. So I'm just going to lay down a coat of the yellow color. And then I'm going to grab that beige and just do a little up under the cap there and at the top of the ponytail. And then I'm going back to the yellow to blend those two out. So 
So the next color I'm going to grab is the flesh color for her face and her little hands here. And then I'm going to come in with the pale pink and do her cheeks. Now again, I'm going to do the same exact thing with the little boy, and I'm adding a little sparkle to her pom-pom there. So you can see that up close. And then what I'm going to do is heat set these two. And then I'm just going to take that gel pen again and just add a little highlight to the top of each of their caps. And you could skip this part if you want to. But you do want to make sure you heat set it before you try to do that. Or let them dry. Okay, so they look cute. Now I'm going to do the little lamp posts. So I'm going to take that yellow and just apply that all inside there. And then I'm going to take orange and do a little tiny bit down at the bottom. And then I'm going to grab the yellow again and just blend those two together. And now I want to go back to that sparkle pen in the clear and just add a little bit of sparkle to all of those lamp posts. So those are all set. Now I'm going to take the nice list and I'm going to grab the turquoise green color and I'm just going to put a little bit of it down the, the left side there. And then I'm going to take my water brush and I'm just going to blend that over. And I'm not being fussy at all here. I just wanted to bring in a little of that turquoise for the sky. Just kind of, I don't know, bring that sky color in. And you'll see I'll use a little on the packages as well. And then I'm going to sparkle that whole thing. Because how can you not have sparkle on everything? So I think that kind of just adds a little something to it. And I don't know if you can see it there, but it is sparkly. And now I'm going to grab those packages. And again, like I said, I'm going to uh, make one of those in the turquoise green. And then I'm going to do the bow on the other one. So I'm just trying to bring in the colors that we've used so far in the tree and in the sky. And I'm going to take that spun gold again. I'm going to do that package there. Out of the gold. It turns out in the end that package probably isn't really going to show, but I colored it in anyway. And then um, I'm going to do the ribbons in the gold. I'm going back to the wine red. Just simply coloring that in with that. And then I want to use my gel pen again, so I'm going to heat set that. And I'm just going to add some little stripes to the uh, turquoise green package. And again, I don't know if you can see all this, but I will show you a little closer in a second here, and you might be able to see it better. And then I'm going to add a few little polka dots to the red package. So now you can see that. I think you can see a little of the detail there, and it just adds a little something to those. So now I'm going to take the light gray, and I'm going to do this little house here. I'm going to just put the light gray on the roof all over, and then I'm just adding, going to try to add a little shadow here. So first I'm going to blend this out with my water brush. And I know this is really hard to see, so I apologize for that. But I am going to add a little bit of shading in a minute here so you'll be able to see a little bit better what I'm doing. Just blending that light gray out. And then I'm going to take the dark gray, and I'm just going to add a little shadow under the snow there. And now I'm going to blend that down. And a little bit under that roof line. And 
And then I thought that little front porch needed a little bit more of a shade there, shadowing there. So I just added a little bit more. I'm just pulling it from the left into the center and the right into the center there. Now I'm going back to that spun gold and I'm going to do my windows in that. And I'm going to do the clock as well. I figured the clock would be lit up. And then I'm going to take the wine red and do the front door in the red, just again to bring that pretty red color in. I'm going to go ahead and heat set that. And now I want to add a little bit of that snow, more of a textured snow to the roof. So I'm going to use the embossing ink pen, which I just got this and I, I'm I really like how this works. It's got a really nice detail tip on it. And then I'm going to take the textured white embossing powder, again from Lawn Fawn, and just sprinkle a little of that on. And that's embossing ink, so it's going to hold the embossing powder there. And then I'm going to go ahead and heat set that. So it's nice to be able to put embossing powder exactly where you want it to be. And I didn't do anything else with the embossing uh powder, but I thought it would just add a little dimension to this little image. So now I'm going to take the May Green, and I wanted it to look like a wreath was around that clock, so I'm just dotting on little teeny tiny dots of green there. Nothing fussy here, just to give the illusion that there's a little bit of a wreath around that clock. So there you can see it a little bit better. So now on my tree, I decided I wanted to put a bow. So I'm going to take the die set, the mini wreath die set, and I'm going to run that through my Sizzix Sidekick machine in the white paper. And I'm just going to assemble this little bow. So I'm just wrapping that tab around the bow there and gluing it down, and then I'm going to glue this onto the the ribbon part of the bow. Now once that's dry, I'm going to go back to that wine red color and I'm going to color it in. Now I could have colored it in beforehand, but sometimes the paper gets really wet and it's hard to get the glue to stick. I've learned that the hard way. So I decided to get it all glued together first and then come in and color it. And now I'm just going to attach that to my tree. And I think it just adds a little something there to the tree. So now I want to add a little, another snowy border down at the bottom here. And I want to cover up that little section of road. So I'm going back to the stitch till side borders. And again, I always just, I just cut a bunch of four and a quarter by five and a half sheets of paper just so that everything is going to be the right length. And I don't have to worry about it when I'm assembling a card. And then I just save the leftovers for another project. So I went ahead and die cut that little border there. And I'm going to take these double-sided adhesive from Deris. And these are the uh, strips. They're little foam strips. And I've been looking for these forever. And I did manage to find some at a local store. And I will try to give you all the information at the bottom as well for these. And I love them. They're, they're, they're not real high, which is kind of nice. And they're pretty pliable, so you can kind of like shape them to the curves, at, like on this snowy border. So I went ahead and attached that to my card. And now I'm going to attach this little image here. I did put some glue up towards the top there, but afterwards, and I did try to tuck it a little bit under that road. That's why I said before, don't put too much glue up towards the top of that road. You just want to make sure you can still tuck something under it. And I did decide I wanted to take another little piece of that foam tape and just put it up towards the top of that image because it wasn't laying quite flat with all those borders we have under there. So that kind of just made it a little more dimensional. So now I'm going to go ahead and take the tree and I'm going to figure out where that needs to be. Just trying to get the positioning right here. And now I'm going to add some glue to the back of this. 
And you will see in a minute here, I did decide that also needed a little piece of that foam mounting tape up underneath there. So I'm going to cut another little strip of that. And I'm going to tuck it behind that star. Now for the packages, half of it is on that snowy bank and the other half is going to be sort of attached to the lower level there. So I'm going to use one piece of the the pop-up tape and then glue the other side just so it lays nice and flat. Now I've got my cute little elves and my nice list and I hope I'm on that this year <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and attach that to the little elf there. And again, uh, I want her to lay flat, so I'm putting a little foam tape up at the top. And then I'm going to put some glue down towards the bottom there. And I just think, again, these are just so cute. It's too much fun, isn't it? I think we're just having too much fun here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing. I'm popping this little guy up as well. And that looks good. So the scene is starting to come together here. Now I want to add my little lamp posts. And I'm just, I'm not going to be real fussy with these. I'm just adding a little glue down towards the bottom part of the post. I'm not going to try to tuck uh, foam tape up underneath those. I'm just going to let those just kind of rest there. So I'm just putting glue about three quarters of the way up. And then I'm adding that fourth one down at the bottom there. Now I did decide I wanted a little bit of a saying on here. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to use You're on My Nice List from that set with the little elves on it. And I mounted it on a, on a block here. And I wanted the paper to match everything else I've done, so I'm taking that wine red pen and I'm just going to color a little piece of this white paper here. I'm making sure I heat set it because I'm going to emboss it with the Nouveau Embossing Powder in Glacier White. And this is a super fine detailed powder. So I'm going to ink this stamp up with the Versamark ink. And I want to make sure that I use my anti-static powder before before I do this. So you want to make sure it's very dry, then use the anti-static powder, then ink it up with the Versamark ink, and go ahead and stamp it there. Then I'm just going to uh, apply a little that powder across that image there, and tap off the excess, and then heat it with my heat gun. Now I'm going back to the tonic trimmer and I'm just going to trim that down. And then I'm going to grab my scissors here and just make a little banner out of this. So I just want to cut away that excess there. And I'm going to cut into the center and then from each corner down to the center to make like a little banner. So I'm going to pop that up on my card. I'm going to use my foam mounting tape. I chose this one because I can cut it in strips that are as wide as that banner. I thought the other strips might have been a little too narrow. Of course I could have used a couple of them, but I thought this was a little bit more secure. So I'm placing that on my card. Sorry I'm a little bit off camera there, but you'll get to see it here in a minute. And now I'm going to go ahead and take that jelly roll white pen and I'm going to put snow all over and in front of them in front of the tree as it would be falling down so it's I didn't put it on the white obviously because it won't show we just have to assume that it's there and uh, you can see there it adds a lot of detail some snowflakes a little larger than others and it's so fun I just think this these little guys are so cute so I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at my website, pinkwhisperdesigns.com. Thanks again and have a great day. Bye-bye.